What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I remember having the same feeling towards the DCEU. And it was, I don't care what they're doing. I'm just hoping that it gets better. Shout outs to Diego. Shout outs to you for telling me this. He showed it to me, Brian, but I couldn't believe it. So we kind of got like a little Marvel roundup this week because there weren't any gigantic sort of feature stories, but there was a lot of little stuff all over the map. So we begin with as what Pablo's referring to is, you know, what Marvel seems to have become, which is this kind of playground for the stars gone bad. I don't know what I don't know what the right word for it, but it's this A-list googly eyes that Kevin Feige seems to have gotten. And so obviously we know Hugh Jackman returning in a big way for Deadpool 3. I think we're still ex generally excited about that, but there's been this ongoing rumor that this is a segue into Secret Wars. And there's been these off and on rumors of is Hugh Jackman in Secret Wars? If he's in Secret Wars, how big of a part does he have? So getting a little bit warmer with a rumor this week that he playing some hardball with the studio about his participation in Secret Wars, saying that reportedly, not confirmed, that it's he will reportedly. only- Yeah, so we'll, he will only appear in the movie if he gets to interact with both, meaning share scenes with both Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man and Tommy McGuire as Spider-Man. Brian? This whole situation now just reminds me of just two words. The second word is moves. What type of moves, Brock? What type of moves? If you rock moves, <laughs> rock moves, yo. What? I will only do this if I only get to talk to this person because I want to live out my fairy tale. I don't care what the dialogue is. I just want to interact. I want to share scenes with him. Well, Hugh Jackman, if that's what you want, it better be good. Because all those movies, although great, will be looked at as like the good old days versus the garbage that we hope, Brian, we don't get. But it doesn't sound good. No. And I feel like even though this this movie will not die on the vine, meaning Secret Wars, although I have pitched this idea <laughs> that if they were doing the long term, what's in the best interest, mm -hmm. they would scrap Avengers five and six until they were ready. But I did feel like, even though this will not be the case, I feel like bringing in the recent Bob Iger quote and applying it here, which also was in the news flow this week, where he talked about, quote, we've killed some projects quietly behind the scenes. Now. We don't know exactly what he's talking about, although we can guess a little bit on the Marvel side because we heard no updates. But like when I read stuff like this, mm -hmm. to me, that's making the case of like, if this becomes too much of a mess and too much of an A-list ego fest, mm -hmm. then I would submit that this is a project that should be killed. Because there's just no way, in my opinion, that you will be able to deliver a classic Avengers film in the category Secret of, Wars. Right, Secret Wars. In the category of Avengers 1, 3, and 4 with this kind of behavior on set. And to, and to be, I'm gonna be very honest, Avengers 2, although not particularly most, you know, not well received for the majority, this is a polarizing film. And for me, Brian, I think the difference is just Ultron. Everything Ultron wasn't really working for me. 
the Avengers themselves, their interaction, all that stuff was dope. Yeah, I agree. And I can, I would honestly say like, if you count Civil War as Avengers two and a half, you know, maybe they almost made up for it in, in that film anyway. So point is, Ultron is certainly a very profitable film. It may not be in the classic top shelf, but it's not a terrible film either. And like with where we're headed for Secret Wars and the the artist formerly known as Kang Dynasty, there's potential for, I hate to say it, there's potential for theatrical Justice League type disaster. Like that, that's in play. Yeah. With what's certainly. going on here. It's in play. Now again, unconfirmed. But... But what is confirmed and why this rumor ha- continues to have legs, Pablo, is what we talked about, which is as Marvel has found the sledding more difficult at the box office and with critics, you know, they're finding it like bigger names want in on this, but then want to exert more influence. As you say, like it is very reminiscent of how Dwayne Johnson and his team operate. But in, in essence, it's also just reminiscent of how big A-list stars like to throw their weight around. And Hugh Jackman, if he's doing this, basically feels like he's got the leverage. I don't know what happens after this. I mean, if if we get the 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 leaks of poss- the possibilities of Robert Downey Jr. coming back, all the important stuff is has nothing to do with the story and the movie, and it has to do with numbers. And all we get is these dudes on screen together. Hopefully that's not, hopefully I'm wrong, Brian. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully we get something. Hopefully we are as skeptical as we were with No Way Home and it changed our, we were completely wrong. We were concerned, but I would say we were concerned about complications to the story. We were not concerned about Willem Dafoe and Alfred Molina telling the studio what was what. That's a little different. I did want to submit before we leave this topic is, does it feel to you like all remnants of whatever Kang Dynasty was going to be are gone and we're just going to go right from Deadpool 3 to Secret Wars Part 1 and Secret Wars Part 2? Are are you getting that feel? Because it feels to me like that might be what they're moving toward is not even having like a whatever the Kang bad guy winning part one was going to be almost now feels like it's just going to be a longer secret wars there has been uh, talks of getting a Doctor Strange movie up and running right off and on we hear come about saying he's shooting something we don't know what what else could what else could it be okay there isn't anything else other than what we've already said we were going to get which is Thunderbolts and but we have to get to that part. There are some possibilities that may not happen altogether. We have to really co- go ahead and just dis- discuss that. I'm going to propose a certain scenario, Brian, so that we can sort of dissect this whole thing and sort of predict which are the the not the martyrs because we don't care <laughs> like the, the 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 ones that will be axed. But that's the other thing I've been taking from these rumor mills. It just feels like everyone is circling Secret Wars. You don't hear anything about Avengers 5. So I'm, I'm just guessing that Avengers 5 actually is Secret Wars Part 1 now. And how do you feel about that? I mean, it, that helps a little bit, I suppose, if you're trying to do anything with the comics version of that story. The thing that scares me is, does that just mean you're making the Cameo Fest two movies instead of one and counting on people to pay twice? Because if the first part's a mess, then you're looking at Matrix Revolutions well, part it two. Doesn't, the consensus seems to be that it will be very much profitable. And so the feeling is now that they're sort of doubling down on that uh, potential success, Brian. They're I don't think it's an us, automatic. Huh? I don't think that's an automatic. If the budget's $300 million, I do not think that's People an automatic. People are out there saying this is an automatic, Brian, that, they, that, this, that there's no way it doesn't get to a billion dollars, Brian. That's what they're saying. I mean, when they when they announced the Justice League movie, did anyone think there was any chance that wasn't going to make a billion dollars? I think people would have told you they could have put anything on screen. 
and it would have made a billion dollars. And that didn't even get close. 600 million bucks. Like, not I, I, I honestly, Brian, when I saw Dawn of Justice, I knew it was over. I didn't, I didn't think Justice League. By the, the time the, we got there, I agree yeah, with you. But yeah, when yeah, they yeah. announced the movie, the yeah, idea yeah, yeah, that yeah, there was yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. a Justice League feature film, followed, like at that time, I don't think anyone would have said like, hey, that's a sub a billion dollar movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would be difficult to, to, to have that conversation and not look at someone like you're crazy. But that now I feel make like, a billion yeah. dollars. But now I just feel like if you're going to throw a $300 million budget up on, on Avengers 5 and just assume, like, yeah, I would probably say the betting odds are it would be north of a billion dollars. But come on, man. what? Why is a billion dollars the benchmark for that movie? I mean, the first one was one six. The second one was one three. The third one was over two. And the third and the last one was three billion. One billion is a failure. Like newsflash, it's a failure if it's at a billion dollars. I'm sorry. Even if technically you say you broke even on it. I don't know if, I don't know how they get to a billion with the current roster. We've, we've said it over and over again. That's the thing. There's just no way. It's, it doesn't no have way. the feel of an Avengers team up movie because you don't have the individual characters people want to show up and watch. That end credit scene in Shang Chi, "Welcome to the Avengers." Are you kidding me? Aquafine is not an Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> also, do <Deuce> Flash. <laughs> But she is. I just don't say it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's like that's like one of you know. We can't fill a roster. Anybody could be an Avenger. Walk on, fan giveaways. Yeah, exactly. Anything else, Brian, in the Marvel? Yeah, uh, world. One in the positive. Uh, maybe we'll we'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Evans has been doing some press recently, just being asked about Marvel. He's been very diplomatic. Um. But then he got a little poetic in, in an area that we like. So someone asked him what his favorite Marvel movie experience was. What did he say, Pablo? If anyone is out there saying that it isn't the Winter Soldier, any they guess any movie outside of the Winter Soldier, most people would say, Brian, Infinity War. Infinity War was dope, but the thing that messes it up for me is the Hulk. Most people would say it's Thor Ragnarok. But once again, Hulk. Most people said Endgame. But well, once again. <laughs> no Christmas the card for Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> Those are the, the blemishes, Brian. That's the, you know, in, in, in Austin Powers mold, that mold, that big, you know what I'm saying? You just yeah. can't help. It's, it's distracting. No, from I, the, 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 the group, perhaps Infinity War Endgame, man, at the moment were the greatest experiences at the movie theaters I, I had felt in a long time. Go watch the tape. You're preaching to the converted. I think the way I would just describe it is movies like Infinity War, Endgame, Avengers 1, Iron Man 1. Those are great films. Yes. Winter Soldier is a perfect film. That's yes. how I see it. There is a difference. Yeah. And Chris Evans knows it. So let me just read you his quote because I, I, I love what he said. It's my personal favorite Marvel movie that I was a part of. Not just for the movie itself, but the experience. First film, I was so nervous. You know what you're stepping into. And as a result, you're playing defense. You're playing not to lose. But when Winter Soldier came around, we were playing to win. End quote. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all they did was win. Well, we're coming up with like we're two about two months away from the 10 year anniversary. We'll do something for it. But I, I really feel like that is the underrated turning point in the MCU's history is that two month sequence of Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy coming out uh, after they had come off. I of, think we should go live for that one, man. That should be yeah, a live. Maybe show. do a watch along. Maybe do a watch along. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Something yeah, like that. But yeah. those two movies back to back following Dark World and the polarizing Iron Man 3, I think people underrate how important those two films were in sort of leveling up the audience's awareness and respect mm -hmm. for the product. But I still think that's the best movie Marvel's ever made. Yeah, so, certainly. By far. So wanted to put that out there that even the star knows <laughs> for all sorts of reasons that was the high point of his MCU participation. Man, and you, you're right. Iron Man 1 is 
what ruins it, I guess, Brian Iron Man one is the third act with the Iron whole, Monger. Yeah, yeah, Iron yeah, Monger Iron to Man. me keeps it a notch below. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. right. But let us know in the comment section below. Yeah, let us know which is your favorite. I know you're gonna probably throw Thor Ragnarok again, but the Hulk, really, you like the Hulk in that? Okay. Infinity War. Hulk got beat. Didn't want to come out all this whatever. Endgame. Built for this, really? You should have took that like a champ. Instead, we see a, the Hulk in a sling. Are you kidding me, Brian? Damn, man. The Hulk is disappointing, man. Again, I'll put that picture up for you that with the Hawaiian shirt and, 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 his, and his bastard son. <laughs> <laughs> Snow, what is it? What's his first name? <laughs> Take a good look at that, man. That's what we got, the Hulk. And now you want to throw World War Hulk in, at, at me and, and try to get me excited? Nope. I'm sorry. I, and Mark Ruffalo is a great. If you haven't seen Zodiac, man, yeah. he is Downey's fantastic. In, in Downey's in that too, by the way. And Downey's in that too. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what, what you guys think about this, and we'll see you next time on the Gem Report. The show goes on! Yeah!